Elon Musk originally invested all of his PayPal money into SpaceX and Tesla, the latter because he realized that the world would run out of fossil fuels. He set his sights on creating a viable electric car, showing how EVs could actually be better than gas cars and at the same time run on renewable energy. As Elon Musk has stated time and time again, there should be no sacrifice for buying an EV, and since the early days, the technology at Tesla had continued to improve while finally grabbing the attention of the large incumbent automakers. These traditional OEMs now all have electric programs thanks to Tesla's massive push, showing the industry how it can be done. The International Energy Agency has shown a massive increase in battery electric vehicles worldwide, even though full battery electric cars still just make up a small 2% market share of overall car sales. However, according to Deloitte Insights, this trend is expected to continue with EVs taking 30 to 50% market share in major geographies worldwide. Yet, many are still in denial that this trend is occurring, but it's actually happening much faster than people expect. Recently, this article by Motor Junkie stating 20 reasons why electric cars aren't taking over yet was posted on Google News. While the article does hedge itself by saying that EVs won't dominate yet, Many of the points brought up and pushed out to readers about electric vehicles are no longer true or will soon be irrelevant. Motor Junkie starts off saying that battery replacements are too expensive for EVs. While it's true that an electric car battery is expensive, there's little reason to be thinking about replacing them if they can last the lifetime of the vehicle. Tesla's current batteries are designed to last over 300,000 miles. Many gas cars don't even reach that level of mileage without completely breaking down. And additionally, Tesla's upcoming 4680 battery cells and their new battery packs may allow for over 1 million miles before needing to replace the battery. At these levels, the battery will likely outlast the rest of the car, but this insane lifespan may benefit certain use cases such as robo-taxis that are driving all day and semi-trucks that are constantly driven long distances. Overall, this was a concern when EVs were in their early days, but now batteries have higher longevity and OEMs have warranties to back them up. The article then references a lack of charging stations in the United States. While the location and number of charging stations is important, the amount of power they are capable of delivering is also crucial for faster charging and reducing lineups. While Motor Junkie refers to rural America not having enough stations, Tesla's supercharger network now covers almost the entire country. They also continue to bolster the number of stations throughout Europe and China and Australia and other parts of the world. Now this is important for long distance trips, but most charging is done at home, which is a massive convenience over gas cars. Every day when you wake up, your car is fully charged and there's no need to make a special trip or detour to the gas station. Next, the article states that electric cars are heavy, However, this isn't exactly relevant to EVs overtaking gas cars. Teslas are surprisingly nimble given their relatively higher mass and it's amazing that they are powered by electrons rather than combustible fossil fuels. Reducing weight is important for vehicle range, but EVs are now close to par with many gas cars. Over time, especially as batteries achieve a higher energy density, EV weight will come down, making the vehicles even more energy efficient. One advantage of heavier vehicles, however, is that they are in fact safer since they carry more momentum and tend to continue moving forward in an accident, reducing the force of impact on the passengers. Number 17 is an interesting point that EVs may be more difficult to repair. Most things, however, that break or need constant maintenance on a gas car don't even exist with an electric car. For example, oil changes, power steering hoses, transmissions, even the brakes on an EV don't need to be replaced as often since they use regenerative braking most of the time. While electric cars still have fluids that need to be replenished or changed, the vehicles have fewer moving parts given that there's no engine or cylinders and are being built to have minimal repairs. Teslas don't even require yearly maintenance. Now that said, if you own a Tesla, they are rapidly putting up more service centers and have a mobile service fleet. Other EV brands will be serviced at their respective dealerships. There is also a big right to repair debate going on right now. According to Electric, Tesla has released a parts catalog in 2018 and has provided do-it-yourself maintenance, 
But for more in-depth repairs, getting unique parts or having the proper tools will likely require Tesla to work with mechanics and third-party shops eventually, since their systems can get pretty complex, which do make it more difficult to repair from your own garage. Now, Motor Junkie complains that electric vehicle range simply isn't there. Now, this article was written in 2021, but maybe the author was looking at GM's EV1, which had a 55 mile range in 1999. Today, Tesla's most affordable model, the Standard Range Plus Model 3, has a base range of 263 miles. One level up, the long range has an impressive 353 miles. With the massive number of supercharger stations that exist now, and the fact that most people charge their vehicles overnight, range anxiety is no longer an issue for Tesla owners. If you spent $185,000 on the Porsche Taycan Turbo with just 200 miles of range, then it may be a different story. However, Inside EVs notes that Tesla has been accelerating the pace in which it is able to increase the range of its vehicles. The Model S had recently surpassed 400 miles of range. Tesla's new 4680 batteries, becoming available for next generation cars starting in Europe, will be even more energy dense, allowing for huge range gains. Tesla did cancel the Model S Plaid Plus, but it did have a stated 520 plus miles of range and likely use the 4680 batteries. Model Y coming out of Tesla's Giga Berlin in Europe will use these types of batteries by default. Now I believe that slow charging times is a real issue. It may still take years to drastically reduce charge times and the main reason for that is that charging stations will need to be upgraded to provide significantly more power, something that Elon Musk has alluded to that Tesla would begin doing. Current V3 Tesla charging stations offer 250 kilowatts of power and Elon Musk has hinted that they could eventually go up to 350 but has recently tweeted that Tesla is beginning to roll out 300 kilowatt chargers. The battery chemistry would also need to be improved to accept a much higher amount of charge at a high speed. Currently, Tesla's Model Y can recover 200 miles in about 15 minutes. That said, charging speed isn't linear and depends on the vehicle's state of charge, as outlined here by Motor Trend. As the battery fills up, the charging rate decreases. This will continue improving over time, however. Cars are mainly charged at the owner's place of residence, so it's fully charged every morning. When going on a road trip and stopping at a supercharger station, Tesla gets around this longer fill-up time by providing restaurant stops along the way and in-vehicle entertainment that can be used while the vehicle charges up. Number 14, the high price tag. The total cost of ownership for a Tesla Model 3 today is actually less than many ICE cars. They're quite expensive up front, but people are willing to pay up to get an EV and cut down their maintenance and fuel costs. The article says that the $7,500 tax break on EVs doesn't matter to most people. I think this is wrong. The tax break for sure matters and influences buying decisions. Currently, Tesla no longer has this tax break, but companies that have sold fewer than 200,000 vehicles would still have it. Also, if new tax breaks come into effect in the US, it definitely would make a car such as the Model 3 or Y extremely competitive with new gas car prices. The next thing they point out is that batteries will wear out, whereas a gasoline engine can get 140,000 miles on average. The article doesn't even mention battery longevity. Early electric vehicles did have some battery issues, and this may be a bigger problem with smaller batteries that need to be charged more frequently, though battery longevity has improved over time. Tesla's car batteries are currently designed for 300,000 to 500,000 miles, which is multiple gas car lifetimes. This could mean a 20 plus year lifespan. Companies, including Tesla and Ford, do offer eight year warranties on the battery to help with this misperception. And if that's still not good enough, with Tesla's new 4680 batteries coming in the future, Tesla will likely be able to get them to run for a million miles or more. Now this fire hazard point number 12 makes no sense. The article states that because an electric car is completely electric, the risk of fire is a lot higher than in your average gas-powered vehicle. This is completely backwards. The car holding flammable liquid fuel actually catches fire about 10 times more often than an electric car. But in the rare case that an EV does catch fire, the media picks it up and promotes it. Overall safety has also been a huge focus at Tesla, 
which has allowed them to achieve the lowest probability of injury of any car on the road. Since this article completely overlooks safety, it's also important to note that Tesla's HEPA filters in their vehicles also clear out toxins from the air, allowing for healthier air free of allergens and particulates. Number 11, subpar performance. Now this is wrong again. While I guess the article was basing its findings on GM's EVs from the 90s, electric cars now have significantly better performance. Even the instant torque, which gets extremely noticeable when you go from driving an EV back to a gas car, the small delay that occurs after pushing the gas pedal down starts to become very noticeable. At the high end, Tesla's Plaid Model S is now the fastest production car in the world. It can outrun a Ferrari or a Lamborghini, and it's just a fraction of the price. And by the way, stop using Yahoo Finance, stop using Google Finance, and check out our website themarketisopen.com where we have instant stock quotes and financial data going back 10 years and it's all freely available. Now number 10, the lack of availability. Now this is a good point. I like how they show Rivians in the picture, which are not yet in production, and they talk about the Fisker Karma the company has always had a problem executing. Now this will remain a challenge for all EV makers as sourcing the batteries is a major bottleneck. Tesla is the only EV maker that is working on massively scaling up battery production and at the same time sourcing batteries from every major supplier in the world. If you order a Tesla today though, at least in the US, it's usually delivered within a few weeks. Once Tesla's Gigafactory in Germany is up and running later this year, European markets will have a much shorter lead time as well. Now, service centers are very important. Elon Musk has even said in the past that supercharger and service centers are key items that consumers look for before making a purchase. And thus, Tesla has been ramping up service centers, but they also have a mobile fleet of vans that can come and repair vehicles. While the service network for gas cars is highly entrenched, Tesla is quickly building theirs up, and over time, since they both manufacture and service their own cars, they'll be able to design the vehicles to require fewer repairs or make them easier to perform. Lack of charging infrastructure. Again, most of the time vehicles are charged overnight at people's homes using the existing grid infrastructure, and Tesla is solving the other side of the equation with their solar solutions decentralizing energy generation. But Tesla does have the largest charging network with over 25,000 charging stalls worldwide. Imagine a car company that owned all of their gas stations. Tesla continues to build out and expand their charging network and making the stations themselves more powerful and faster at charging cars, increasing vehicle throughput. That said, many apartment buildings will require what might be an expensive upgrade in order to bring charging to underground parking garages, though there are services such as ChargePoint that help to make this more seamless. Now the high electricity bill depends on where you're located, but generally, since electric cars are multiple times more efficient than gas cars, filling up an EV is usually a fraction of the cost. Even in many places where electricity is more expensive, it's possible to add solar panels, which I think gives consumers more control over their energy costs and usage. Before, you couldn't build a gas station in your backyard, at least not easily, but solar panels will power your vehicles with your very own power plant. Maybe this entire article is one of those reverse psychology jokes, similar to how Gordon Johnson is Tesla's biggest bull by saying things that are so ridiculous, making even bearish people turn bullish. Now the battery in an electric vehicle is flat and takes up the same space as the floor of any other car. Because there's no engine, there's even a frunk for extra storage space. The article states that Tesla's Roadster had very limited cargo space. Well, of course, it's a sports car, the smallest that they made and they only sold 2,500 Roadsters in total since 2008. Now that we're living in 2021, Tesla's Model Y crossover has 66 cubic feet of storage, which is more than similar size gas-powered SUVs. Number 5. Electric Car Cost They're using a picture of an unreleased GM Hummer to make their point. The Hummer is highly expensive and the starting price is $70,000. Unfortunately, GM doesn't seem to have thought this through. They're trying to turn a gas guzzler into an EV, which will require a massive amount of batteries that they don't have. At one point, they were planning to partner with Nikola to make their truck. It seems like GM is all over the place. Fortunately, Tesla's Model 3 starts just below $40,000, and even the Cybertruck, which is more comparable to the Hummer, but more capable, crazy enough, will also be starting at $40,000. 
Zero emissions is a lie. Well, zero emissions is not exactly a lie because the car doesn't have any emissions. But it is true that if it's running off a coal-powered plant, as about 30% of the United States does, then this will contribute to worldwide pollution. According to the U.S. Department of Energy, on average, a gas-powered car produces more than twice as much pollution as an electric car. Coal seems to have also taken a big hit over the last couple of years as the U.S. slowly cracks down on this type of fossil fuel energy source. However, coal still produces over 80 terawatt hours of energy in some months. Tesla, on the other hand, deployed 92 megawatts of power in the last quarter. That works out to be about 125 gigawatt hours per year, according to Sunrun's website. But this is still just a small fraction when compared to the amount of energy that coal produces. Also, if electricity demand increases, more energy generation is required. Tesla does have both sides of the equation covered, and this does represent a large opportunity for Tesla's solar and battery storage divisions. Nevertheless, a study by the International Council on Clean Transportation about life cycle greenhouse gases for battery EVs versus ICE cars shows that even today in the US, Europe, China, and India, battery electric vehicles produce significantly less emissions, and this lead will widen, according to their research, into 2030. Number 3. Quick charging can damage batteries. Well, the car won't let you accidentally damage the batteries by charging too quickly. Consumers really don't have that option, so this isn't an actual problem. Of course, better temperature management systems and more advanced batteries continue to allow for faster and faster charging times in a safe way, which will eventually allow for charging that rivals the time it takes to fill up a car at the pump. Number 2. The resale value is questionable. Now this might be true for non-Tesla EVs, but actually the resale value for Teslas is surprisingly good. That's one of the reasons why the cost of ownership is highly competitive for Tesla. Because there are fewer parts that can break, the batteries now last years, and with Teslas they have free software upgrades that continue to improve the quality of the vehicle even as it ages. This has kept resale value much higher compared to a gas car that's said to lose a third of its value when you drive it off the lot. And number one, parts are hard to find. Now, this is a strange point to have as the number one reason why Motor Junkie thinks EVs won't replace gas cars. While there are currently fewer EVs out there than gas cars, the makers of the vehicles have the parts for their own cars. Again, this article was written in 2021, and yet they keep talking about the old Tesla Roadster from 2008 as if that's what everyone is looking to buy today. And the ability to find spare parts is usually not what people look for when they're making their car buying decisions. The shift to EVs is happening much faster than anyone thought, though it may not be fast enough for Tesla. But today, parts are becoming much more available, especially at Tesla service centers, where they continue to make an effort to stock common parts. Plus, because fewer things break due to not as many components, not as many parts are required, compared to a gas car where there's much more to go wrong. So do you think this article brings any merit, or are electric vehicles poised to rapidly displace gas cars over the years to come, especially as production continues to ramp up while gas car production begins to trend downward? Please hit the like button and subscribe, we would really appreciate that. And a huge shout out to all of our patrons that help to support our channel. Your support helps us to continue to make great content. Thank you guys so much for watching.